All right, we are now joined by tonight's winner of the 65th annual Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway, driver of the number 20 Joe Giz Racing Toyota Camry XSC, Mr. Christopher Bell. We'll begin taking questions. We'll begin with Jacob here in the middle, and then we'll go to Matt Weaver over on the right. Jacob Snowman, Race Face Digital. Congratulations, Christopher. I got two for you. Uh, first, finally a win in one of NASCAR's crown jewels. I know it's rain shortened, but how significant for that, or how significant for you is that given you've been close in a few of these? Yeah, it's, uh, it feels so good. And, and really, the last two Coca Cola 600s, I felt like we've had. Um, the potential to go to victory lane and and both times we haven't been able to do it so uh, it, You know come back in 2024 and and we've really been in a been in a slump the last couple weeks so uh, To to come out here and have a banner day. at such a high-profile prestigious event is uh, Is really big for us. I uh, obviously it was a great points day to get stage points in every stage um, and then the playoff points that come along with that so it, uh, it was a much needed day for sure. At what point, whether it was just before or after that halfway break, at what point in your mind were, were you starting to race the rain and feel like, okay, we've got to put ourselves in position because any moment it could be over? Um, I, I really, I, I don't know exactly when I got told about the rain. I think it was right at the stage break. Um, you know, they said that the rain was coming and we likely wouldn't get to the end of stage three. So, you know, you could feel the intensity in the race uh, just pick up and people, you know, were, were being very aggressive for how early we were in a 600 mile event. And I think it was because they knew, um, everyone knew that we were racing to the rain. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a bummer we didn't get to get all 600 miles in, but uh, I'm just very, very proud of this 20 group because they, I've been working really hard to get us back to where we need to be, and, and today was a great step in the right direction. Matt, Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. Uh, right before the what turned out to be the final restart, you had even asked Adam, you know, what's the weather update, and he told you then that, you know, we're going to lose the track, but we probably have a window to race. So with that in mind, like, did you feel like, the adrenaline surge, did it feel like a green white checkered something like, like are you racing like it's the end? Um, I, I would say certainly it, it ramped up and you could, you know, just feel the, uh, the pressure and the intensity and the importance of, you know, that restart, the laps that, uh, we're going on, um, you know, in, in that moment. So I, I the, the range of emotions that I went through from the time that we get out of the car, the lightning strikes, because we got out of the car without any rain, right? And the lightning strikes hit, and we're like, okay, we're going to get right back in. And then the rain came, and it's pouring down rain, and we thought for sure that they were going to call the race. And then uh, whenever they didn't call the race and the rain stopped, well, then it's like, okay, well, there's no way they're going to call the race now, so we're going to get back after it. So uh, I never in a million years thought that I was going to – um, be winning that race on a, on a rain shortened event, uh, after they didn't call it whenever the rain, uh, stopped, I thought for sure we'd be completing the event. And then, uh, Brad felt like that he just needed a long green flag run to kind of work you over more. Uh, what was kind of the key there on those two previous restarts to be able to hold him back? Uh, I mean, obviously getting clean air is really important and, and I'll be honest, the six car was really fast and the fact that he could keep pace with me like that, um, showed that his car was really strong and the rfk team has been doing really well the last couple of weeks uh with you know brad winning at darlington the 17 being in the hunt the last um little bit here so you know they keep getting better and, and certainly uh in that moment the six car was really fast so um I, I needed a little bit of help with my car to to get it a little bit better um if we were going to go back green because i felt like he was probably a little bit stronger than me at that point in the race all right we'll go right here and then we'll go to bob Christopher Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer. Where you at? Oh, I see you. Here you go. Uh, congratulations. After the race, when you were announced uh, as the winner, it wasn't because of you, but because some fans wanted to see more racing, there was some scattered Oh, I got boost. booed out of the place. Yeah. I did. I just wanted to ask you about what you thought about that. Oh, man. It's, uh, it's just another one to my career, man. There's a lot of my wins that have come that way, whether it was Ross riding the wall at Martinsville or... Um, 
heck, I don't know. It just feels like whenever I win these things, they have asterisks on them, but um, that's all right. And it's still a win for me. And, and uh, you know, like I said, the last two years, we've been really competitive in this event. So um, this it, it's not like we just lucked into lucked into this thing. You know, we led laps. I passed for the lead. Uh, we had great pit stops. Picker did amazing. Um, it was just 400 miles instead of 600 miles. All right, we'll go to Bob, and then we'll go to Steven toward the back. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Kind of along those lines, you lead 90 laps. So do you feel like this was definitely like a deserved win, even though it was rain shortened? Uh, I mean, I, I would say so. You know, the fans probably aren't going to say so, and uh, that's fine. Um, you know, I, I, I say it every time that I win races, or out of my eight wins, I, I've said it time and time again that it's not good enough, and, and we're here for more. So, um, you know, that, that, that's fine. I want a range shortened Coca-Cola 600, but that, that's not, not going to be my last win. I can promise you that. So i uh, got to keep it going and got to win more to, uh, you know, make it happen. All right, we'll go to Steven here, and then we'll go to Lee up front. Steven Toronto, CBS Sports. Christopher, um, in your post-race interview with Fox, you referenced how it was just good to have a solid, complete race given uh, the up and down nature of your season so far. Um, now as we are the summer months, there's only four drivers who have won multiple races this year. Uh, you're one of them. How do you think that positions you for the summer months, June, July, as we approach the playoffs and all positioning and seating that goes with that. Yeah, so honestly, where this 20 team is at uh, is is a really good spot because now we're sitting at, what, halfway through the regular season um, with two wins, which is amazing, and we've been extremely disappointed with how our season's gone. So uh, I think that just goes to show that the the ceiling is there and the capability of this team is there. And, you know, we're, we're – we – haven't been performing like we want to, um, but you know if we put all of it together, we can certainly be a contender week in and week out, and be a guy that wins you know a, a handful of races year in and year out, and that's uh, that's the end goal. You know I don't want to be just a a you know a one or two win a year person. I want to be a, a five to ten win a year person. And and what is your outlook for the month of June? Because obviously New Hampshire's in there. We know what your record is in New Hampshire, but. Uh, next week, we've got Gateway. We've only had two cup races there so far. And in three weeks, we go to Iowa, where we've never raced cup cars. So um, what's your outlook for the next four races, at least? Uh, I mean, Gateway's been a struggle for us, for sure. The last or the only two cup races we've been to, uh, it's it's been a weak link on, on the schedule for the 20 teams. So that one, I, I don't know, you know how I feel about it, but certainly going to Sonoma, um, road courses have been really good for us, so I would expect us to be a contender there. And then um, Iowa, uh, I, I don't know how anyone could be considered more of a favorite than me. Uh, and then Loudoun, it, it is obviously a really good racetrack for me. So we've, we're in a great part of the schedule. And uh, the cool thing is, is that I, I, I mean, I feel like every time we go to the racetrack, I, I should have capability and be, have a chance to win. So um, we just got to keep keep pushing in the right direction and and you know the last several weeks have have not been good but uh you know I, I know that i have the right people around me to succeed and and do really good things thanks christopher lee right here lee spencer series x of nasca radio and catchments.com when you made the pass by byron they told him basically he's running the wall and i'm wondering it, it only seemed like some cars could run the wall coming out of turn four, but it seemed to be that's where the momentum and speed was. And it, how, you know, how imperative was it to be able to have a car that could do that? Yeah, I mean, the, the top really since the next gen car came out in 2022 and 2023 here at Charlotte, uh, the top has gotten to be really good here. So. Um, it's something that I found, or I, not just me, but a lot of us found early on in the next-gen stages at Charlotte. And uh, it took a little bit for it to come around tonight. And then uh, it seemed like whenever the nighttime came, the, the top got really fast. And, uh, for, you know, Byron is, is certainly capable of, of running up there. And, and uh, fortunately, I found it before he did and was able to get a run on him. 
And, and in the Netflix special, you basically said you guys weren't even going to include me, and you know, then you end up going to Phoenix. You like being under the radar because people just don't expect you to be there, and it, you kind of live up to that baby-faced assassin, you know, moniker where people don't expect you to be there, and then you just kind of go in for the kill. Yeah, I mean, I, especially here recently, <clears throat> we just haven't been running good enough, and and nobody. Nobody deserves accolades whenever you're not running well, and, and we have not been running well. So, um, but today, hopefully, shows that we have capability. And, and I, you know, I, I, I hate talking the talk and not being able to walk the walk behind it. But um, I know, and my team knows, and, and you know, my company knows, Toyota knows that we have the capability to be a factor week in and week out. It just hasn't come together yet. So, uh, yeah, I got to walk the walk now. Go to Steven right here. Steven Stump, Frontage.com. Uh, Christopher, with the extra stage here, you ended up scoring 67 points uh, along with the seven playoff points. Um, you went from 15th in points to 11th. You uh, went from 100 and let's say 166 behind to only 105 behind the lead. You know, in addition to winning, just how important was you know winning this race and getting all those points to catch up? You know, in the regular season standings, and and you know, and be in contention for those playoff points at the end of the regular season. Yeah, that that's huge. In Charlotte, whenever you come to Charlotte with that added stage, it's a, it's an opportunity race for sure, and we we capitalized on it. So I don't know if that's going to put us back in the hunt for the regular season championship, being a hundred out, right? You said a hundred out, hundred and five out, and and eleventh in points. That's um, that's going to be a tall order if we're going to try and win this regular season championship, but. Uh, to get the stage points that we did is a, a huge, uh, huge uh, move in the right direction, and hopefully, you know, I can win a couple more races and get more stage points. But I, I still don't feel good about the regular season championship. We'll wrap up with Claire up here in the front. Claire B. Lang. Can you talk about, you know, the art of racing in the rain to prepare yourself for what might happen? Everybody gets really aggressive. You got to keep your head screwed on. What are you thinking? How, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, it's just the, the, the aggression level picks up whenever everybody knows that rain's in the area. Uh, it could be called short. Um, everyone, those, those restarts become even more intense and, and everybody runs harder. It, the, the, and especially at the Coca-Cola 600, because if it's going 600 miles, there's a lot of give and take that happens at the first half of the race. And, and you kind of pick up intensity as you're going throughout the night. Um, but we just got over halfway and the intensity level was through the roof. So, uh, yeah, those those restarts and those uh, those last couple laps, we knew that we're uh, we're racing to the rain break and um, we didn't know if we were going to go back racing or not. Uh, but after the rain stopped, I thought for sure we were going to go back racing. I think everybody did. Uh, so that one caught me by total surprise whenever they called the race. So your mindset is, I think we're going back. Now you flip into, what if we go back? What am I going to do? What have I learned? So then it flips on you. What's that like? Your brain has to just be jumping around. Yeah, I mean, it was it was wild for sure. And, and whenever the rain started, uh, I thought for sure that they would cancel it because it was pushing 10 o'clock at night, we were going to have to dry the track. And then we still had uh, two more hours of racing left. Um, so I thought for sure that we had won the race then. And then whenever they didn't call it by the time the rain had stopped, I, I didn't think that there was any way that they were going to call the race. So um, I was back in the motorhome trying to take a nap because I knew it was going to be a long night. And uh, it probably still is going to be a long night, but <laughs> under different circumstances. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, if there are no further questions, Christopher, congratulations. Thank you, guys.